Hey guys, welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by Brandon and Becker today. Hello, Hi. everybody. And uh, today we're just going to be going over some of the news that uh, happened this week and just talk uh, all, all things nerdy and you know, we'll see where this goes. So, All right. So I think the first one we should kind of bring to light is Schumacher. Yes, uh, Joel Schumacher, the director of not only Batman Forever and Batman for Robin, or Batman and Robin, he also was the director of Falling Down, which was a very good movie starring Michael Douglas, and Lost Boys. Among other things, he, he's directed some pretty good movies, and uh, he unfortunately passed away this week. Yeah, and let me just say again, on record, I had no idea he directed Lost Boys, and I totally did not realize, on top of that, Kiefer Sutherland was in that movie. <laughs> yeah um but joel schumacher i i he gets not enough credit for the good films that he made i had no idea the kind of films he made until becker was literally telling me yesterday <laughs> <laughs> he did a screenplay for the whiz with michael jackson and diana ross oh that's right he wrote the the whiz and uh mm-hmm. car wash yeah. yeah those are both funny movies they're good movies uh, oh, on yeah. top of that, he directed the number 23 starring the one and only Jim Carrey. Oh, <laughs> wow. I yeah, look at this one. list. It's yeah. interesting. The Lost Boys, of course, and, you know, St. Elmo's Fire, yeah. which he directed as well. But, uh, oh, and Flatliners, I've heard of that one. And I, he's one of those directors, I, he seems like, he just seemed like in his interviews that he was just a genuinely nice guy. and. And everything, and which uh, it didn't seem like he had a big ego or anything. And I really don't blame him for Batman and Robin or Batman Forever because that was, it seemed like it was just all studio interference with those movies. And I really, I don't blame him for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cause and- he, he said in an interview too that he was, uh, you know, he, he, his, his intention was to just entertain everybody. And it didn't help either the, too that he, uh, you know, the studio or the toy companies would come up to him and say, hey, you need to work this this action figure suit into the movie somehow and everything for this stuff. So, I mean, it was just all, I think, just greed. So, so the bat nipples are based off of action figures? Probably. Probably. Chicken well, and the egg. <laughs> chicken and the egg. <laughs> all right, well, let me be the one to break the ice and say that Batman, was it Batman and Robin that came out first or Batman Forever? I Batman forget. Forever. Forever. Batman Forever. Let me just say Batman Forever is the first Batman movie I've seen. That's your very well, first one. That was huh. my first one. Yes, it was not the... We're not going to get into this, but it was not the Michael Keaton Batman movies. Okay, it was Batman just, Forever. There's a little foreshadowing here. We're going to have the debate of the century of who was the best Batman next week on this podcast. So make sure you tune in for that. <laughs> or is this also including animation stuff and voiceover stuff? Oh, of course. Or just oh, yeah, oh. definitely. Yeah, Kevin Conroy. Oh, oh Kevin, yeah. Kevin Conroy always. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Batman Forever was the movie. I don't even know who had it. I just remember it being in my house on VHS. And I remember watching it literally religious, like all the time. And nope. as a kid, I was like, yeah, this movie's great. And then you watch it as an adult and I go, oh, Lord, well, what's going on? And, and then I bought the Blu-ray box set with all the movies. Yeah, those uh I think that Val Val Kilmer is he he was a pretty good Batman. Yeah, it was yeah, very good. Yeah. Very good, very good, uh, very good in the cowl. Yeah, no, I don't Yeah, those lips. <laughs> Dude, those lips. Him bro. and him lips. and Keaton just had like these excessive lips. <laughs> and those suits here. like Keaton had those big jagged lips and then like just all lips. Yeah, and I'm just like, Jesus, guys, like but, you gotta um, look good in the cowl, you know. Yeah. It's just one of those things. I bet you it's because it was, uh, it was uh, made out of like rubber latex and had to smush your face all together. Yeah. <laughs> and then but, uh, uh, I don't think that George Clooney, like, I think that he deserved to to have a redemption role as Batman because I think that he could have been a good Batman under a better yeah. script or or better direction. Somebody who understood the source material more. Well, let's uh let's look at it like this, like uh like Becker. How do you honestly feel about both those films overall? Not just as Batman adaptations, but just as movies. 
Mm, well, I was a young lad when it came out, and my original uh, reaction because I really liked the Michael Keaton ones, especially uh, Batman Returns is probably in my top three. Oh, uh, just based go based on our stuff. I know it's so silly, but it's so it's so scary, but at the same time so so cool with all the clowns and uh, and the dirt bike skeleton dudes. Either way, yeah, I, but, but you're the thing, not but, the mayor. Yeah, ex- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just so, he has he's a so, helicopter he's from an so umbrella. Good. He's just so good, Michael Keaton is. We'll get there. Let's not spoil so, it. Okay, okay my, my, sorry. I'm sorry. My initial reaction was uh, of it was like, why is this thing not canon? Like, what happened? Like, because they mentioned Vicky Vale in Returns, but they mentioned nothing about that. So, like, this, this is before, like, you have, like, uh, multiple universes and all that stuff. Right. And then you're there. And then just watching it, and then like the whole art style was totally different. Uh, the whole you know, the Batman was obviously different, but the Alfred was still the same. And, and so was uh, Commissioner Gordon. And the commissioners, go, I, which is probably one of my favorite commissioners. Really? Like, like, yeah, I, I, I like, like, I, like dude, I love his. I love his little like fat B word sounding. You know, it's like I saw the thing though. Uh, Batman. Yeah. You know, he has that. He has that weird <laughs> way of talking. Batman, I saw the thing though. The you know. the only reason I like that Commissioner Gordon from that universe is just because I really like. I think Pat Hingle is a great actor mm-hmm. but i just felt like they really didn't know how to use commissioner gordon in those movies that's the one oh, yeah. downfall of those ones but yeah, Pat he, Hingle, yeah he, he was like it. 1960s uh 1960s marvel animation um commissioner gordon right just like he's only there for one thing for yeah. Exposition. Yeah. well yeah so so you basically you did enjoy them when they came out because oh, oh i loved them oh yeah. i loved them that vhs was in my VCR, twenty four seven, and I would watch Same it. Here. <laughs> then I re, right. then I rewind it, and then I watch it again. That's the case with with just Batman Forever. It seems like for everybody, like even though people are just like, yeah, it's not the best movie. People have seen it so many times, like compared to other movies. Well, I, you know, well, sorry, I was just gonna say real quick. For me, that was what the the two Batman movies I had. I didn't have Batman. I didn't grow up watching Keaton Batman. That was the thing. So I saw those movies as an adult. I didn't have nostalgia kind of, and I'm not even trying to like, oh yeah, we can cuss on your channel, huh, Danny? Uh, just, uh, I try to keep it PG-13. <laughs> okay, I, I don't give a, uh, I, I don't have nostalgia for those a films. Damn. A damn, so I don't, don't give, give a, a damn. damn. Yeah. I, uh, like, they weren't like the bee's knees for me, you know? Like, I saw them when I was maybe 19, and I was like, okay. I remember seeing clips as a kid, but I never sat down and really watched them because nobody in my house had them, but we had the Schumacher ones. So my perception of Batman on film was the Schumacher Batman growing up. See, I, I saw – because I grew up on the animated series, and I well, same, yeah. and I saw, I saw the original 89 Batman before – and the Adam West one before I saw the Schumacher one, but I didn't see Batman Returns yet. And when I saw the Schumacher movies, I it, it wasn't Batman, but they were fun to me. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I didn't go into the mindset with it like this is Batman. And people like like Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, like how much he hates on Batman and Robin and everything all throughout <laughs> those videos. I'm just like, dude, it's it's just not worth getting that upset over. Yeah. Like it just isn't like it's. Well, also a lot of those guys and stuff. They have to amp up the the. They have to more, yeah, but even when he's just being Doug Walker. Yeah, I'm just well, like. Eh, the other know. thing is there are redeeming qualities of the films, whether it's for the memes or like legitimately being good parts of a film. Right like, to and, me, and I Jim think that's. Carrey, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. Go ahead with Jim Carrey. No, I, I agree. I was gonna say, I thought Jim Carrey was a fantastic Riddler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a little w- cuckoo, but like wacky, you know, he was like Jim Carrey. Yeah. It was being Jim Carrey as the Riddler, but it worked. Like, mm-hmm. right. I Remember, haven't seen an on-screen Riddler be that good. Like he, maybe he was the last one. I don't even know. Yeah. I prefer, I prefer so, that Riddler over the, you know, the, the 66 question. Cool, no, no question. Oh, oh no. That's my favorite one. Uh, yeah. Frank Gorshin. Yeah, yeah Frank yeah. Gorshin has really that's my yeah. favorite one. So it reminded me a lot of him. I prefer that those Riddlers way more than the dark, uh, you know, bullseye tattoo head. Uh, yeah, that, I don't know. I've been, seeing, I've been seeing recently and stuff like. That. I'm, I'm like yeah, yeah, that's the only one I like is like I like that one and I like the one from the Arkham games too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but, but when he's kind of like a joke, that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm, and yeah. I, I think we we owe that to Schumacher's directing because like the Rob Robin was great in Batman Forever. He was. They really did his Apparently story he still well. Has the suit. 
Huh? Apparently he still has the suit. Oh yeah. Which well, one? <laughs> I, I, uh, I thought that they did Robin really well in Batman forever, not in Batman and Robin. I thought that that was, they really dropped the ball. That, on movie. that movie. Let me just say Uma Thurman was not a good poison Ivy. It's not and, good. She, like, like Uma Thurman's hot, but she's not poison Ivy hot. Yeah. Right. She's not I never poison, saw her like, as poison Ivy. And Bane is literally my favorite Batman villain of all time. I love Bane. Any Bane story, I will eat up. And you know what I mean? Like, it like he's him awesome forever, man. Villain. It would if then, they if they did uh, it right. Arnold would have been a better Bane. Oh hell yeah! yeah. I, I would have taken Arnold. As the Bane. only thing is, they didn't do this back then because you know they kind of just casted whoever as characters or mainly white actors, right? Uh, and I could be wrong. You know, not to say it was only white actors in the '90s or so, but like. You know, they've been better at it these days where they've actually had Latin voice actors for Bane. Right. In a lot of, like, interpretations of Batman, which, you know, he's from a Latin country. So right. it was just kind of like, why is he, like, this weird pasty guy that just mumbles and kind of growls? But I still would have been okay with Arnold, Arnold Bane. <laughs> you know, this is where I come into the memes. <laughs> and I don't know if this is, like, whoever, like, Based off who wrote it, or oh, maybe oh, character oh, improv. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Brandon. Before we go any further, Patrick Stewart, especially because he was just coming off of Next Generation when they made this movie, would have been an incredible Mister Freeze. Oh hell yeah! Captain I can Picard. see that. Yeah, yeah, he would have been a great Mister Freeze. Yeah, you and know the what? voice I think and Mr. everything. Freeze, he's he's German, right? No, he uh, sounds Victor, like he's Victor got Freeze? kind of. Yeah, it could be. Uh, he Austrian. sounds like he he's no. got like a uh, like a European kind of voice. He's definitely European. I just can't remember. Because oh, didn't they get the same I... guy to voice him in the Arkham games as they did the animated series? Uh, no, the guy that uh, voiced him in uh, the Arkham games is Calculon from a uh, drama, <laughs> I believe. Okay, well he did a great. <laughs> nice. He did a great. He did a great. I could great be voice. wrong. I could be wrong, but it sounds just like him. You, you are done say, giving me orders, Batman, or however he says it. That was terrible. Yeah, yeah they say so, yeah, he might be uh, either Danish too. Yeah, Danish, something yeah, like Danish that. Is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I just thought Patrick Stewart would have been a great uh, Mister Freeze. I can see that, especially if like he did a certain. I, I can see him doing a certain accent too. Yeah, even just his regular voice, I thought was would have been good. Yeah, just, make him sound a little English. That could have worked too. Yeah. I would just love to see Patrick Stewart as a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, really he zombie, never does though. play bad guys, does he? Mm-hmm. No, I mean he was a crazy old man in Logan, but <laughs> oh, oh yeah, see that yeah, he, even he, that, that would have been perfect too, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah but but, uh, Mr. Freeze. I was uh, speaking of Freeze. That's what I was gonna say. When you when you think of Batman Forever or Schum- uh, Schumacher Batman, it's pure comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's the bat credit card, the ice skates that pop out. Hilarious. All the puns that Arnold says are Arnold is having a blast in that movie. He's having so much fun. But he's like still serious acting. I love the part (laughs) where uh, he's making the henchmen uh, watch like jingles and stuff. Yeah. Like frozen dinners are still frozen. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, dads, everyone, zig, zig, and he's zig just laughing out. at them." <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, it reminds me of the old uh, the, um, the Japanese commercials Arnold used to do. Right, and, and you know, he's just laughing. We we always complain about you know people get mad if you cast a different actor that's a different race and and characters if you change that race from the comics or whatever. But you know, I am always okay with it if you find an actor who nails the character. I don't think it matters what what race they are, and like you know, like I. Michael Clark Duncan as a kingpin is one of those ones. I was oh, that's like, cool. I, I thought he did a great yeah, job. He was an awesome kingpin. Yeah, I was like, yeah. he's perfect. I don't see Michael Clark Duncan. I see the kingpin. And mm-hmm. one of the, those cases I thought was Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, was, great that too. was the other thing. Yeah. That was weird. I was they, really disappointed that they didn't use him. As, I think he would have been a really good Two-Face, better than Tommy Lee Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and why is Tommy Lee Jones like laughing all the time in that movie? <laughs> I oh, know. I, and then he, then he, I love the duality of his characters. And, and then he, fl- he flips a coin until he gets the answer that he wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he like, got two just, chicks, man. That's one of the ones. Where, it's Drew Barrymore, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my that's, God. That's one of the ones where they really, I thought they, they didn't do a good job on him, but. No. Yeah. And, but, Apparently, in the original script for Batman Returns, the. Uh, Billy D. Williams was supposed to turn into Two Face at the end. I mean, oh, that'd been it's great. Happen eventually, right? No, it, was well, supposed yeah. to, it, was, it was supposed to be the taser part. Like, yeah, you know, Selena how, was yeah. going to taser him and burn half of his face, and then he, yeah. the next movie he becomes Two Face. Yeah, that uh, would have been great. Yeah. Well, I guess 
despite its flaws, I think like, you know, he definitely left his imprint one way or another on the Batman mythos. Right. Schumacher did. I think that they brought him in and said, you know, lighten this stuff up after Batman returns. And he did what he had to, but I think that it could have turned out at least with Batman forever way worse. And (laughs) Batman and Robin, I think, you know, was, it's not good, but it's, it's not it's still fun to watch. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, a, it's it's a so bad it's good movie, and I'll take that over just bad. Yeah, you know i I kind of use it like uh, kind of like my Star Wars prequel example. Like those movies, say what you will. You know, Danny, we talked about it in our in that past episode, but those movies are at their core are just fun to watch sometimes and just laugh at the memes. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that's how I feel about those. Right. But uh. You guys seem to be more well versed in his other films. Like, how do you feel about him overall? Like, with like his imprint on Hollywood. I I think he was a director that a lot of studios brought in to. I, I don't want this to sound mean, but I feel like a lot of studios bossed him around, and he kind of lost a lot of the fights on films that, like Phantom of the Opera. He directed the the Phantom of the mm-hmm. Opera with uh, Gerald Gerald. The, uh, yeah, but 300 the 300 guy oh, Gerard Gerard Butler? Butler? Uh, yes that guy so <laughs> he, you mean you mean like every movie's like hello who are you and yeah. that, that's like every Gerard Butler that's a terrible Scottish accent and he, and he hasn't <laughs> and he, he, I, I never I was like why the hell is he the Phantom of the Opera like I I don't I, I don't know anyways I don't know. um I think he lost a lot there was a lot of movies like Phantom of the Opera where I was like this could have been good if the studio I feel didn't boss him around so much or, or, or he didn't cow down to the studio as much. And I mm-hmm. think that was his weakness as a filmmaker, but when he did get to do what he wanted, he was, he was pretty good. Like with uh falling down. For example. Well, down. Mm. I'm going home. So, <laughs> I'm going so home. Like, what's, what, what would be like some of your guys' favorite, like favorites that he did then? Uh, falling down. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I'd say falling was, down too. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one I just had. Yeah, you know, like, I remember the most. I mean, like I seen Lost Boys like once. All I remember is the the greasy sax guy playing that. Yeah, uh, there you ass, go. Through that song, love that yeah, song. He's killing it with that and, song. Uh, I I watched The Wiz because I was a Cowardly Lion in high school, so I just wanted to absorb all like all forms of the Cowardly Lion. Yeah, and uh, so I did that one, and uh, that was great too. Uh, Saint Elmo's Fire. The only reason I know that even existed because that was a spell in Final Fantasy VI. Right. Yeah, that was one of uh, Moogle's <laughs> and, Moogle's attacks. And he wrote Car Wash, and Car Wash is like one of my parents' favorite movies. That's yeah. like it's a fu- it's a cult follow. It's like I don't even want to say cult following because like it's always been a really popular movie. It's just I, I a day in the hearing, life of people at a at car at a car wash. Yeah, I only been hearing about it um, only very recently and everything. That's like yeah. under my radar. Well, have you ever heard the song at the car wash? Yeah, is yeah, that, that's is it, is it from that. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's a seventies movie, and uh, yeah, it's just. I I don't think he gets enough credit, Joel Schumacher. I really don't. Well, for me, my personal favorite would be Lost Boys. I remember watching that movie a lot growing up. It's pretty crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, like, looking at his list, he's definitely one of those directors that are, you know, not every director, like, hits it out of the park, but he's definitely one of those directors where, like, you could see why they would choose him for certain projects. And then you look at other movies, and you could see that they just needed a director, and he probably was just like, sure, why not? Exact. That's what I was saying. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know, solid, I though. I hope that people don't just focus on that part of his uh, his career. Well, he's definitely well known for having like a good. He's got a good like set of films under his belt, you know. And the, I have no doubt that there is at least five of these movies on here that people would say are their favorite movie of all time. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, you know we are going to be doing a, a live watching on uh, on Apollo City Comics uh, channel for the excuse me for uh, Batman and Robin and Batman Forever. So <laughs> oh, hell, oh hell yeah, really? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> a nice reaction You're, video. Everybody's invited. So. Everybody's invited. <laughs> oh god, that's so, good. Oh, man, <laughs> like Two Face in Batman Forever. Like my my favorite one, uh, my favorite Two Face of all time is going to be the uh, the Arkham City ones. But, oh, yeah. uh, but and just, the animated uh, series and the animated series. He's great. He's great in that too. Yeah. But, uh, but just like he has some of the best lines in, um, <laughs> everybody says this. I, I noticed this on YouTube. Everybody comments and I agree on the, the scene where you get introduced to two face 
in Batman Forever for the first time, mm. they nail Two Face for those first like ten seconds. Is oh, it like hell him yeah. the bank? Yeah, it's yeah. But, but, like you don't you don't see the side of his face that's burnt. And he's mm, just yeah, like, right, yeah, he's yeah. just flipping the coin and it's he's talking to the guy. And then as soon as like they reveal his face, it the just goes changes. All, yeah, it goes all downhill. And then he starts laughing and goofing around. Yeah, okay. First, I remember. That's like, also the one where uh, Batman has the fireproof cape or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he covers himself. <laughs> yeah, he has that button. And then yeah. he, gets, he gets that uh, Halo 3 fucking shield thing. It's so yeah. those movies are so ridiculous. Well, either way. We're, Let's just say, we're gonna miss you, Joel. We're gonna miss you, Joel. We're gonna miss the memes. You did good movies. And okay. I like to think that there's people out there who, you know, will still enjoy them for years to come. Right. Well said. And, and rest, rest in peace, Mr. Schumacher. Yes. To Joel Sh- hey, to Joel Schumacher. Yeah. But um in more I sad think- news. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joel Sinnott has passed away. Is it Sinot or Sinot? I think it'd be Sinot. Yeah. So I know. Sinot. I know Becker might not know about him, but basically, Joel Sinot was, or Joe Sinot, Joel, ugh. Yeah. Joe Sinot. Uh, used to talk to me about him a lot, Danny, about how he just continued to work until he literally died. Yeah, he retired at like ninety or ninety-two. Yeah, like he still tried working, and they forced him to. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he just died yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, in the comic book industry, people tend to not pay attention to the creators, especially back then. Yeah. Like, a lot of people have no, like, credits to their work to this day. But it's kind of like in this day and age, and even back then, it goes in the order of, like, writer, artist, inker, Letter, oh. <laughs> colorist too. Colorist, colorist. Yeah. T- today, so, colorists are still at the bottom. I think. Yeah. So Joe Sinat didn't do. I'm pretty sure he did art, like drawing, but he inked everything, like yeah. for Marvel from like the very beginning. Practically. And DC. And DC. Yeah. He did a ton of work for DC. I mean, he. I always say I don't think Jack Kirby still doesn't get the credit he deserves by like the mainstream, but. Joe Sinnott to me is on another level of just not getting the credit he deserves for all the work he's done. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of those people don't, like you said, and you know, people tend to forget an inker does so much by bringing the picture to life. Right. And he, he inked Jack Kirby. He inked John Byrne. He inked, uh, John Romita, uh, Steve Ditko, Steve Ditko. God, who else did he, every Um, major person. Like when did he go to DC though? Let's see. I think he bounced back and forth. Mm, it's hard to say. There's. It just says he has a legacy. He worked on everything, basically. Pretty much. He was like, he was it. Yeah. But just, you know, as a reminder out there that a lot of these people were getting old that influenced our pop culture. And wow, he was doing stuff in 1943. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it right now and stuff. Yeah. The, did a, the man was born in 1926. Yeah, he did. He did a nice, uh, nice little, um, uh, nice little comic called Mopsy. Ow! Oh. <laughs> it seems like he apparently he got his big break in the Silver Age, though. So in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, and then that's when he was he was always inking Fantastic Four and uh, Silver Surfer. Yeah, and he he really brought kirby's artwork to life with like the kirby crackles and everything and and all that good oh, stuff like, like i said people don't realize how much work inkers and colorists do there's a reason why they're separate jobs right yeah it's uh yeah. it's just sad that it i mean it's obvious he lived a good life i mean what 93 years old yeah 90 when did he die uh, yesterday he was born 20 yeah 93 yeah so, oh, you know what's crazy is he died on his birthday, or no, he didn't die on his birthday. I'm tripping. No, 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 no. Sorry, he was born in October. Okay, yeah. he died on his death day. He died on his death. Yes, <laughs> he died on his day. He died. And he was a World War II vet. So, a lot of those guys were. Stan yeah. Lee served as well. Stan Lee, uh, Jack Kirby was, and uh, yeah, they, a lot of them were. And uh, yeah. all that that generation, man, I'm telling you, that's like my grandparents' generation, and they're all they're all going. Yeah, it's getting to that point. So, uh, you know, 
I think, gotta enjoy them while they're still here. Yeah, I think what people should really look into is like realize, like at least find out about the people that have created the things they love, and at least see where it comes from. And right, you know, and and old it's brought pe- you joy. And old people from that generation, like the silent generation, the generation before boomers, old people from that generation, they're so much nicer and more compassionate <laughs> and considerate than boomers are. So it's just turning into a millennial. Uh... <laughs> right. I just, I just, I have to put that out there. I'm just like, guys, don't rope all old people together because silent generation and greatest or greatest generation, whatever they're called. They're so nice. They're always such nice people. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was having a Sunday in Vacaville one time. I was sharing it with my one friend and then these guy, this old guy just comes up to me and he goes, you boys are under arrest for a case of extreme decadence. And, <laughs> and, and then I'm there, I'm there with like, like a huge scoop of ice cream about to go in my mouth. I'm like, ah, oh, 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 me. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> I play by my own, I play by my own rules, old man. <laughs> you don't tell me to what to do, but, uh, <laughs> How much you selling that weed for, old man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and let me just disclaimer here: I don't, I don't hate all boomers. My parents are boomers, and Bob Ross was a boomer, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're probably the nicest, oh, yeah. peaceful one of all. Yes, I don't want to make sweeping generalizations about people. I'm not like that. No. So but, uh, those are the only three good ones. <laughs> my mom and dad and Bob and Ross. Bob, yes, Bob Ross. They're at Bob <laughs> Ross level. That's what's up. Oh yeah, that is what's up, man. I should be very proud. <laughs> but um yeah i mean it's great like he's one of those people that almost deserves their own episode because there's just so much and it's like hard to just like skim over it and you know what i mean we'll have to piss that over on apollo city comics or or even over here whichever one we can do first because i would be down to do an episode on joe Sinai because like he has seen everything in comics and to work that long in comics that's yeah you know, it, it doesn't get any bigger than that when you've worked on legendary series with legendary writers and artists. Right. And you know, most guys like they, they kind of semi retire where they just go to, they, they retire from doing monthly books and just stay at home and, you know, resell old art or they draw commissions or whatever, but he, he just kept going. Yeah. Like I said, he, he was one of those people that did not stop. He was a machine. Well, also they have that mentality because a lot of people that worked in like the, golden and silver age silver age of comics they they weren't paid a lot so they had to yeah. push out work because they're commissioned by the piece not by like hourly or anything and, and we don't think about this either you know a lot of them drew for like they did stuff in advertising and and magazines and stuff on the side and like this was like they had to work like two or three jobs to make it yeah and they got paid mm-hmm. no, next to nothing and now you know all these multi-billion dollar characters are kind of you know pay for themselves <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But, but yeah, this uh rest in peace, Joel, uh Joe. No, so it's Joe, Joe and Joel. Joel and Joe. Okay, yeah. Joe Sinat, rest in peace, and you know, thank you for creating such uh such great work. And yeah. Kevin Smith, if you're listening to this, inkers are not just tracers. You take that <laughs> back, you son of a bitch. We still love you, Kevin Smith, but stop saying mean things. I know exactly. Like you're awesome, but <laughs> goddamn you. Yeah, but uh, to keep it on the comic book news, the big one that people are starting to talk about: Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. Yes, oh. I'm so excited. Ready? Are you both? Are you both just ready for it? Oh, dude, that was I like, just, oh, dude, my mm. body isn't ready. Like that's just like. Okay. Okay. Well. Danny, I know your piece on it, and I definitely am gonna hear it. But Becker, since you're the special guest, let, let's get some uh, let's get some opinions. I saw the first one. I saw the first 1989 one with the Prince soundtrack, mind you. Uh, <laughs> Bad Dance is the greatest yeah. Batman song ever. Oh, oh yeah, uh, hell yeah! I, I got the I got oh. the, all the Prince songs on on my Spotify playlist. Oh, Party Man, Party yeah. Man, where he's where he's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Gentlemen, so good. Let's broaden our minds. Well, anyways, <laughs> I saw that when I was like five years old in the movie theater, uh, oh, which is great. Oh, oh wow. yeah, oh hell yeah, dude! And I had I had the Batmobile and everything. So yeah, he was my first one. Then Batman Returns came out, and then and then like. I I I I watched it several times. That was another one of those. Like all my all Batman movies were always in my VCR, like at all times at the ready. So 
So then uh, Batman Returns came out, and that was even better too, because uh, because it was totally darker tone and all that stuff. And then as you get older, you you realize you know all the Tim Burton styles and all that stuff, and how like everything just kind of worked out pretty good, and how everything from the those uh, Michael Keaton Batmans really influence any kind of Batman we have now, you know, just based on darkness and uh, you know like he's all in black now too, you know, and. I guess with the with the suit with the nipples that kind of end on and ended it with it too. Yeah, the I uh, I felt a lot of Neil Adams artwork influence in the in the eighty nine Batman movie because I felt like the suit looked just like the uh, Neil Adams suit, just just a different color. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just I think when they were holding Burton back is that's I think that's why that movie turned out so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I think that Keaton, he really is the best on-screen Batman. I would yeah. say the best overall I, Batman is Kevin Conroy, but like, I think he's the best on-screen Batman we've had. The, the 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 suit in Batman Returns was always my favorite because for some reason that I had like the weird abs on it where what didn't look yeah. like actual muscles, but it like looked more like tactical and everything. I like the. He's a, I like the cowl. The, yeah, the, the cowl is great. The, really returns, move the Batman Returns cowl, I thought, was way better than the 89 one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it was just cool. And then he just, like, rips it off at one point. I know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, all the, a, and all the eye makeup's gone. I know, but it's still such a good scene. See, I was going to say, I agree with what you guys are saying, except I stand by my opinion, and this is for another episode. I still think in the suit, Ben Affleck is the best Batman. Oh yeah, he looks great. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, in the suit and when he's like brutal, like not necessarily killing people, but like breaking their limbs and making sure they never walk again. Like, oh yeah, I, I love that Ben Affleck that, Batman. That, that's a problem with both the Keaton Batman and the uh, the Ben Affleck Batman. It's just murdering people left and right. I'm just like, you know, there's this whole thing Batman shouldn't kill people, but man, that warehouse scene in like Batman. I know. Superman, oh yeah, it was great. Dude, like, if I that was a that whole over movie, and over. Yeah, oh, yeah. So that good. was a whole movie. Just but anyways, and people, you know, Michael Keaton, he's he's a good Bruce Wayne, and I don't hate him as Batman. I like him in the suit too. Like, there are certain parts in the movies I don't like. Like, you know, it just feels it's not like the fact that he says it, but like when he picks up Joker and he's like, "I'm gonna kill you for killing my parents." I'm like, it just comes out weird. It just feels awkward. But see, this is what Keaton can do that nobody else in the suit has been able to do. He can look he because he does look intimidating in that suit when they shoot it right. I think he yeah. does look intimidating. He's the only Batman that could pull off doing the bat smirk and look threatening. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like that scene and, and the chemical and the chemical thing where he's just grinning at at uh, Jack Nicholson when he says, "Oh, nice outfit." Before he falls over the thing. That yeah, I mean, only Keaton could pull that off. Yeah, like I said, he's not a bad Batman. It's just Ben Affleck is a, in my opinion, like, and I, I'm really not trying to talk shit, like a better bat in the suit, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And like, again, Keaton's a good, like, if I can get Keaton's Bruce Wayne with Kevin Conroy's voice and like Ben Affleck's build when fighting, like, that'd be my ultimate Batman. Right. I know it'd be kind of awkward to mesh it together, but it could work. I think that if they. If they had, if they were able to make the third one, and I think kind of tone back Tim Burton a little bit, and get some better writers on board, and tweak the suit a little bit, we could have. Really, yeah, we could have <laughs> really gotten a the best Keaton, I think, because I didn't mind his bat voice when he talked. It was okay. It's it's better yeah. than Christian Bale's. Oh yeah, well anybody's better but, uh, than Christian Bale. I think you know, Ben Affleck finally... had had the best Batman voice though to me. Who uh what you said before, right, Ben Affleck? Yeah. I thought yeah, he had no, the best it, bat it worked. Too, the best bat voice. My only thing with all this is it just feels like DC is trying to bank on nostalgia. Yeah. No. Uh, definitely. You no, know, I mean hey, it I'm works. pretty sure it works. Well, I'm no, pretty hey, sure it works. It, they know they're in theaters. Yeah. I um so here's the thing. I I want Keaton to come back and they cuz they they pretty much done the multiverse and the the Flash show. Mm-hmm. And I remember that they that they confirmed that he ends up marrying that this Batman, Michael Keaton's Batman ends up marrying Selina Kyle. All right. So, I wouldn't okay. mind seeing Michelle Pfeiffer come back as like 
an, an older cat woman that's kind of retired and they're married oh, or whatever. I've been gotta watch them. I mean, she looked good still, man. Oh, Michelle Pfeiffer still. She Oh man, like dude, Ant Man at man, dude, at man and Wasp, dude. She, I was just like, that's Michelle Pfeiffer? I'm like, dang, you still oh, look good. Damn, you look good still. Shit. But um <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh god damn. But uh I I want I'd like to see an older maybe a and see that's the thing about Batman that Snyder did with Batman is he wasted the Dark Knight Returns Batman in this universe. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. He so, went he tried going too hard for it. Like Right. Was, I would rather much rather see Keaton play an old Batman. Yeah, yeah, see, that's the other thing. If they brought him back, I would love a I think well, I forgot who said it earlier before we started, but like a Batman Beyond esque Keaton Batman Batman or right. like a, a Kingdom Come Batman. Right. Oh, yeah. You have Brandon been... Rouse Superman play the the Kingdom Come Superman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'd be so down with that. I'm just like, I just sound like an angry, like, pissed off <laughs> nerd. But, like, I just feel like DC just can and Warner Brothers cannot figure out their live action Batman. And they're just right. struggling so hard and, and jumping all over the place because, you know, sorry, I'm cutting you off. What is it? No, no, no go, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, Michael Keaton, everyone's like, yeah, we love it, you know. And then you got Val Kilmer, and then you got George Clooney, and then Christian Bale. Within 20 years, you have these many different Batmans. It became a thing known that, like, a different person plays Batman, almost like James Bond. Yeah, it's like oh, yeah. the Hulk. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. There was, like, three versions of the Hulk before they finally got, like, or, like, four versions of Hulk before they got, uh, what's his name? Mark Ruffalo. Mark, is it Mark Ruffalo or Mark Ruffalo? I like, what, I like Whatever. I, I, <laughs> I like I like the way Ruffalo. I never heard that one before. Yeah, that I never heard great. Ruffalo. Okay, well, anyway, sounds Ruffalo. Great. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I want him. Like, I think I speak for a lot of people here. I really want to see Keaton do a do a Batman Beyond movie. I want to see because we never got a satisfactory end to Keaton's Batman. No, we didn't, yeah. and it just kind of was abrupt. And you got like you were introduced to Val Kilmer. Right. And, you know, I think that that was a great thing about Brandon Routh coming back and being the kingdom come Superman. Like say what you want about the CW shows. It gave us some closure to that universe. It gave you closure to everything we talked about. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't want Keaton to be this, the DC extended universe's main Batman. I don't either. I told you like that father figure of Batman beyond one, like you guys said, that would be perfect. Right. And I could, I'd so dig it. I mean, I'd dig a live action Terry McGinnis too. Mm-hmm, but, exactly. And I, I was really hoping that the flashpoint would do is that they'd open up this universe. So we're going to get the Batman beyond movies in the future. And that means that Keaton might, you know, they might do some time traveling in the movies and you know, this, the other superheroes will meet the older Keaton Batman. But I was really hope I want Robert Pattinson to be the new, the new Batman. Uh, I don't know. I just, I'm at the point where I just gave up trying to like make my Batman mine or whatever, or accept who is Batman. And just at the end of the day, I'm I'm a huge Batman fan. Like millions of other people are, and I'm going to buy the movies no matter what. Like Mm -hmm. you can have stupid ass Michael. No, I don't hate him, but (laughs) I I can't say it that way. I was going to say, bastard, you son of a bitch. You can have someone who's completely unrelated, like fucking Michael Sarah. And I'd still buy the damn thing at Target. I would. I yeah. would watch that. Hell, <laughs> you know what I mean. Michael like, Sarah Batman. I'm not. I'm not being a good fan by voting or speaking with my dollars, but because at the end of the day, I'm gonna buy it. Right, and you know, I. It's just that the reason why I just I, I'm bitching so much about this is just we've seen Batman done so many times with the solo movies and everything. I want to see a proper shared universe. Batman. I want to see Batman yeah. interact with the other heroes. And that was my problem with that's what keeps me from saying Ben Affleck is like the best on screen Batman because they just didn't give him anything to do in any of those movies. Mm-hmm. And like no. we did, we, they didn't develop him as Batman, you know, because they, they rushed into it and introduced him as a side character in a bigger movie. The, this is it. That's introducing Batman. This universe is Batman as a side character. I thought was just. Ah, you know, like uh, there was a say what you will about, you know, Danny and I can agree that the Zach, the Snyder esque Batman is not that good. 
<laughs> like I love Ben Affleck, but you know it's the same thing like with Henry Cavill. I like Henry Cavill as Superman, but god damn, dude, like make a decent movie with him, you know? I just feel like, like... and I, I'm not kind of I'm not gonna give him crap because he had that family, you know, he had he had some tough stuff he was going through. So exactly, I'm not gonna, yeah, and I'm course. not gonna I'm not gonna hate on that, but like right. they got him working on stuff again, and I'm like, okay, dude, like. If you're ready, if you feel ready to pick this project up again, like, are you going to actually deliver, you know, (laughs) like, I just, I, I just don't think he's the right filmmaker for any of this. It's just a miscasting. I don't think that he's that great of a director, to be honest. He can make decent movies. His Dawn of the Dead is good. I think his Dawn of the Dead is good. I, you need like, you need like a Christopher Nolan to make a good Superman movie. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what I think. If they wanted to do it right, he needed to he needed to direct it because yeah, well, I because I, I, he has moved into doing more sci fi stuff. So I feel like he would have said, "Okay, I did the the realistic Batman. Now I can kind of go into superhero territory a little bit more." Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I don't know anymore. I'm with you. I want to see a shared universe Batman already. I'm tired of like these reboots and non canon films like. Right. Joker is amazing and that kind of has bat stuff in it, but like mm-hmm. it's nothing related. Right. It yeah. doesn't move the universe forward. And, and I'm just, I'm so over the Snyder cut stuff. And then now they're saying they're, they're going to try to bring Ben Affleck back and everything. But I just don't think Ben Affleck is, I, I feel like that, that ship has sailed. I don't feel like he really wants to return as Batman. Well, I know for a fact he hates working out. So he hates having to get ripped right. for He got role. shredded for Batman. He hates it too. I saw yeah. an interview where he's just like, he, he loves junk food and he loves eating terribly and he hates working out. <laughs> you see how fat he was in like the Justice League movie? Yeah. Was, was he that big? <laughs> you can see his beer gut underneath the fake abs on the bat suit. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, really? That's great. Yeah, it's because like the, when they did the reshoots, oh yeah yeah so like he's got like love handles for days in that movie yeah so i don't know i mean overall like are you guys just pumped for keaton to be back or oh yeah if they do it right well also like michael keaton as an actor he's been doing way more things like he was great as vulture he was great in Birdman. he was great in other guys he's just a really good actor he's good he's like he's like he has such, a, such an animated face and all that stuff. And like could, I just, I just like watching him. He can play anything, and I don't think that he gets enough credit, honestly. Hmm. I'll be down if they just like in the movie they just go psych and it's actually Beetlejuice, even better. <laughs> or psych. Oh, it's they. It's Mister Mom too, not Batman. I'll and be you know, cool. And you know, Spider Man Homecoming is such a goofy movie, but I mean that part where he t- looks at Peter in the car and says, "I will kill you." Yeah, it's and so he's, terrifying. Yeah. He's scary. No, he's, He's, he's a good actor. He really is. And yeah, I agree with Becker. He's had time to like get better. Yeah. <laughs> and like try different roles. And yeah, I mean, we'll just wait and see, right? We're all going to watch it. We're all probably going to like it at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I just rewatched some of Batman Beyond the other day. I would love to see, I'd love to see him do a Batman Beyond movie, but I don't want him to be this universe's main Batman. I agree. I mean, yeah, so it's uh, but you know who knows? We'll 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 see what happens. I mean, I just I've kind of lost. I mean, if if they're gonna do this with a whole separate bat, a whole separate Batman and everything, and then they won't they they won't make another Superman movie for some reason. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of done with the DC movies. Like I I'm over the MCU movies too. After Endgame came out, I've just kind of lost interest unless they make another Hulk movie. I'm 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 really excited for the Shang Chi ones because that's going to be a whole new territory right there. Right. I, yeah, that's straight up kung fu even, movies. Even, <laughs> even 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 though it's going to be straight up like Chinese pander. Isn't um, it Donnie Yang or Yang? It's uh, sure, I hope so. He, I think um, he's one of the. I think he's the one who's playing uh, who's playing the Mandarin. Oh yeah. Oh he. Oh, if he's going to be the Mandarin, that's even better. Yeah, because the Mandarin is going to be in the 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 what's it called? Uh, no, it's, it's going to be uh, Simu Liu and uh, Tony Leong. Tony Leong. Main. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, anybody who wants to see a good uh, Tony uh, Leong movie, I hope I'm I hope I'm talking about the right actor. 
Uh, yeah. Let's see. Because uh, he was in a movie called Hard Boiled by yeah, John Hard Boyle. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hard Boiled. That's yes. with Chow Young Fat. Yeah. That is one of the oh, wait, greatest. Hard Boiled with Chow Young Fat is a, a, one of the greatest action movies ever made. Like, if you want a good action movie, look up any John Woo movie. Like, because Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, action- there's just, there's just oh, doves everywhere. He's, he's yeah. going to be, he's going to be the Mandarin. Oh, sick. Hong Kong action cinema is just some of the best action you're going to get. Oh, wasn't John Woo, wasn't John Woo's for, uh, first American film, Mission Impossible 2? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. With, my, with, one of the, with one of the best Metallica songs. Yes. <laughs> and it also had Limp Bizkit on the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that movie's just so over the top. Wait, is, that, is that the one with uh, – so who's that dead guy? Shoot. Uh, who was the bad guy in that one? Um, ah. Which bad guy? Wait. Uh, in Mission Impossible 2. Um, Are you talking about uh, the guy that died recently? A couple yeah. Years ago? No, that was yeah. three. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was three oh, that was had three. what's oh. his, it was what's his name as the villain in three. What was his name? Um, because I I love that part because he was like, we're gonna find your girlfriend and I gotta yeah, her really. Was, um, I have an ongoing joke where it was like, I'm gonna find your girlfriend and I'm gonna fart on her face. <laughs> Like really bad, and that was oh. it was uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour man. Hoffman, there yeah. he is. Okay, but do you know the greatest John Woo movie? One of the best, one of his best is Face Off. Yes, yes, yes. Any of you who have <laughs> not seen Face, Face Off, Off, get your shit together and see that movie. Oh, that, okay. Off. Well, I gotta go watch Face Off then. I still have yet to see it. You've With never Nicholas, seen it, dude. Nicholas oh, Cage is... and John Travolta. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. yeah I, oh, I know. I know so a lot good. of things about it, but I never actually sat down. And it's watched such it. a great film. I remember watching it as a kid and loving it. But anyways, <laughs> make sure um, you stay away from downtown. It's gonna be a little smoky <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty and then, like you have you have like uh nicholas cage trying to act like he's being played by john travolta's character yeah that's that's he a- that typical nicholas cage was like so we're gonna get in there and we're gonna take their money and it's, like, <laughs> and it's like when he's just like i want to take his face off, off my off. face and then there's that off. scene where he's like i love Peaches. I could eat peaches for hours. And- <laughs> so, that's, a, that's a really good cage too. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm trying to work on my cage. I, oh, I can't yeah. get it just the yet. Only, the only one I could do pretty well is Nicholas Cage and like Stewie Griffin. <laughs> that's it. Oh, I think uh, I think I read that the guy that did Cleveland's voice uh, quit. Yeah, yeah, he did. Today oh, he yeah. quit. Yeah. Which I'm uh, I'm kind of bummed about. Who are you going to get uh, to replace Cleveland? Yeah, Cleveland was a great voice. Uh, and I, like I, I know that I know that actual African American person in my life. You know, I've met a person like that <laughs> with Cleveland's before. voice. Yeah, you know, it's just like yeah. the chill, the chill ass one. You know. Yeah, but yeah. um, well, um, yeah, watch Face Off because John Woo was, did a great job with that film, and Nicolas Cage is just fantastic. To and look John Travolta at. is just being John Travolta, John Travolta. Is looking crazy, mm. and it's typical Nicolas Cage just like. As you see, we're being shot at, and I'm gonna shoot back at them. And like, it's just like he's such an know. asshole in that movie when he like shoots that woman and throws her off the plane while it's going down the runway. Yeah, he's like it's like Nicolas Cage playing like a like a what is he? He's like he's a he's terrorist. Like a, is he a terrorist? Yeah. What was with just, that? Remember that opening where he goes up and just starts grinding on this girl who's like, she's like singing in a choir and he's just like, yeah, it's like oh. totally inappropriate. And he yeah. like grabs her in a church. I was like, oh my and God. They, like, z- they zoom in on his face where he's just like, oh. Yeah, it's just Nicolas Cage being like a crazy terrorist gang leader and he just kills everybody left and right, shoots them and murders them. And then he becomes a good guy. And it's just ridiculous. Oh, I didn't know he did Wind Talkers too. Oh my God, isn't because, that that movie where uh, Nicholas Cage, Cage like they have a special whisper or something? No, he's a, he's a, it's, a, it's about the Navajo Code in World War Two. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. but it also but going you know um, uh, a callback. It also has a uh, Mark Ruffalo in there too. Okay, <laughs> Mark Ruffalo. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, what we're again. Um, How do we, we, we got our face? I think we started this as. With Michael anyway, Keaton's Batman, you were, you were talking about my, you're over the Batmans and you're over the MCU and yes, I yeah. want I want to I'm ready for a good DC shared universe. I'm down with something a little bit more serious or something with a little bit more variety. 
but and I just it seems like they they want to be so different from the MCU, but yet at the same time do the they 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 don't they want to it's like great you want to be different, but they always end up repeating the same mistakes as the MCU. I don't know. I'm just so stupid. we just gotta wait and see, and then the only way it's gonna change is if we just don't give them money, right? But you know, those Snyder, it's not DC fans anymore. It's Snyder fanboys. Yeah, which I don't get. Huh. But that's a topic for another episode. <laughs> yeah. On a lot. Oh. Let's see. Uh, on a lighter note, have any of you watched the Avengers game new gameplay released? I yes. watched it earlier today. Yes. And what's thoughts? And it looks great. I'm sold on that game. I was skeptical, but I'm really, especially Bruce Banner in the Hulk. He looks like he has a pretty significant part in the in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I only saw the Thor and I think Iron. Is there Iron Man gameplay? Yeah, yeah. The show they I show like that changing one. clothes and stuff. I just I like that scene where they're all like kind of blaming Bruce for what for he was like kind of saying that the event were like for trashing the Avengers, and you see Bruce's eyes glow up and he says like Don't make me angry. We yeah. haven't seen that Bruce Banner in so long. Yeah. Like, I miss the, the glowing eyes and, you know, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me. You wouldn't like me if I'm angry. Yeah, that's, that's a classic one right yeah, there. I miss that hall. My thing is, I'm curious how many people they're going to let you play as. It seems like it's a co-op type thing. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, and this is going to be, we're doing another episode somewhere in, within the blurred lines of when and where and who's going to talk about it, but like superhero video games were not good until Arkham and mm-hmm, now yeah. Arkham set the standard and superhero games have to be good when they come out. Yeah. You're wrong, Brandon. You're so You're going to sit here and tell me Superman for Sega Genesis. Okay. First off the death and return of Superman on Sega Genesis is not that bad. Oh, that's the, I like that one. This second Spider-Man on the PS one was a great game. Yes, I agree. I have Spider Man. Spider Man Two on the PS2 was a great game. Spider Man, all Spider Man games. Spider Man Two Enter Electro on PS1 is a fantastic game. I I just downloaded that on my PS1 emulator. I got to play that. But um, uh, the the code to unlock everything is on May. But anyways, oh um, and uh, oh and uh, Ultimate Alliance. Oh yeah, that's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, Ultimate Alliance is good. But like. Let's be real. Those games are fun, but they were not. They weren't like mind blowing experiences like the Arkham games. And ever since the Arkham games, superhero games have a standard that have to be followed from that. Right. And the Avengers game, I'm worried because Spider Man PS4 really worked, and that game is amazing. Right. Did you play it, Becker? Oh yeah. The game's I play, awesome. I, I, that's like one of the ones I almost 100. Uh, yeah, yeah, I played some I, of it. It's, it's fun. It, I love it. And now there's certain ways you can go about it. Now, with the Avengers game, I don't know what to expect because Square Enix is making it. And well, well, Square Enix, like, I'm watching the trailer right now, and the they're really good at their fight scenes now. Like, Final Fantasy 15, like, just the co op, like, fighting thing. And that's a single player game, too. So, but everyone, it just felt so, it felt so connected with everyone when you're fighting with everyone. I'm really, uh, the story's got me hooked. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've really, I, was so disappointed with the way the MCU handled uh, AIM, AIM. Mm-hmm. You know, oh yeah, the AIM organization. Yeah, yeah it was. It was only. It was only in Iron Man three for like. Yeah, one it was like second. under the rug, and they left it. Right, and I, I'm so happy that we're getting a uh, that they're the, they're the main villains, them and Modok. The the leader's gonna be in the I want, game. I've been wanting Modok for years. Yeah, he's Dude, my I've been wanting Modok live action for years. Oh <laughs> I heard, yeah, I heard who, that. Who do you think would play the best Modok? Jack Black. Ooh. Oh, Jack damn. Black. Damn, that's good. I, I heard that. Ooh, I, I heard a rumor that the that they want to put Modok in the in the upcoming movies. I'm just like, you better get Jack Black because he wants to retire from acting. He does. <laughs> I think he would be a great Modok. That'd be good. Current Jack Black. Yeah. Like, 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 I'm like, going like on nice Reddit real Modoc. quick, and I'm gonna see what people are saying would be a good Modok. Give me some. Mm-hmm. Give me some time to look at some research. Okay. And also, then, uh, I th- also, I think um, uh, Tyrion, uh, Tyrion would be a good one too. Yeah. Uh, Peter Dink, the Dink, you know, he was already uh, he was already a giant dwarf. Why not make him a giant head? You know, yeah, he could be a good one too. 
But um, yeah, I'm just happy that we're getting MODOK and AIM. Just kind of some of the villains that you know that the MCU's kind of dropped the ball on, like the leader of the Abomination, and like oh yeah, and all this. And I I'm interested in this story. I, I want to see what they're what this universe is going to do. And I kind of hope that it's uh, I hope that it's in the same continuity as the new Spider Man game because like the thing I liked about Ultimate Alliance is that Ultimate Alliance and Remember all the X Men Legend games that were oh, yeah. that came out with it. Yeah, oh, yeah. X Men, those are great. All those games were just were kind of in the same universe. It was all fan service. It was all fan service. They had Fin Fang Foom. Right, and you know, you you kind of had like this this loose continuity between all of them, and it even felt like the Spider Man on on PS One game was in that continuity too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they they made it ambiguous where you didn't really you couldn't really connect it, but they didn't say it wasn't connected. Right, and you could be like, okay, I could kind of play this all in the same universe, and I hope they kind of do that now with the the new Marvel games that are coming out. Maybe who knows? It's hard because you know Sony owns the sole rights to Spider Man, right? Right, so, right. But you know, you know how much money they would make if they connected those two. I feel like Sony would be like, okay, fine. Yeah, but yeah, I'm liking the trailer so far. I'm just watching Thor just trash this spider robot. Right. I'm just, yeah. I'm just hoping that they have a nice cast of characters that it's not so many to where they don't matter who you play as because they all play the same, but some that are unique enough. Like I saw Miss Marvel in the trailer. Yeah. And yeah. Was, yeah, that's great. Like everyone's gonna totally gonna have a different play style, and that's gonna be yeah. important. And I've been following the Miss Marvel comics since she started. Oh, really? And Kamala, Kamala Khan? Yeah, mm-hmm. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, please don't let me be wrong. Um, there we go. Okay, that is exactly how. Yeah, Kamala, Kamala Khan. She was in the game, and she's an inhuman with some crazy stretchy powers and growing and all that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, that'd be so dope to play as her. Mm-hmm. Like, the giant I just hope that they make characters unique enough to have some variety in gameplay. And because it looks like a beat-em-up kind of third-person action game. Mm-hmm. So I'm just hoping it has enough depth to where you don't just press one button to attack and all that. I hope that we get, like, first off, I hate the costumes in the game. Like, I hate Captain America's costume. Oh yeah, well the, the, you get the different costumes though, so yeah. that's nice. And that and I, I hope that um, since they're talking about like the Inhumans and everything and wiping out the the superheroes, I hope that we get some X Men stuff in the in the game. Like oh, not really? the, now that it's all think, under one umbrella. Yeah, I don't think that they'll be that they'll be playable, but I definitely think that you know we'll probably maybe even see some of the characters pop up. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. See like, Blackbird. Blackbird come out, they all like they all fly out. Right. Or maybe they yeah. go find Professor X and he's in hiding or something like that. You got a, you got a, you got a phone call with Hank McCoy and everything. Right. Yeah. I, I hope that, you we, mean, uh, that we get that. You mean uh, what's his name from the movies? Um, Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Kelsey Grammer. Dude, that has to be the Kelsey ama- Grammer. What amazing casting that was. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Fantastic. That's my piece. That, yeah. is, that is my beast, yes. That is my just, beast just seeing him like drinking like tea and reading a book with his glasses and like Kelsey Grammer. What I mean, just the perfect casting. Well, because Hank McCoy, you know, his beast was like a he was like a smart professor. And like he is. or was he a doctor? No, was he a scientist? I can't remember. He's a scientist. I, I, believe, I believe he's a scientist. Okay, yeah. Well, either way, he had like a PhD, right? Like yeah, yeah. he's supposed to yeah. be up there with like Dr. Banner and all of them. Yeah, and like Hank, Hank was one of those people, like, his whole thing was that he looked like an animal and a beast, but he was super smart. And Kelsey Grammer just nailed it. Right. <laughs> and please, Disney or whoever at Marvel, just make him the voice actor for the character if you ever put him in anything. Right. Please, it, seems mm-hmm. like, it seems like Disney has, like, or at least Kevin Feige has reached out to try to get some of the old X-Men actors back. Because he, he tried to oh, get Patrick... Great. He tried to get Patrick Stewart to come back as X as Professor X, but Patrick Stewart said like he's just done. Yeah. So but I think I hope the game's good. I'm gonna be honest, I probably won't pre-order it because money and I don't want to chance it. Right. You know, it looks like the kind of game I got for thirty bucks and be happy with it. But I don't know. You, I don't know, are you guys gonna go for release day or uh I gotta get a PS five first. Well it has it has the it has them uh you know the, you get to play like four days early thing so i will probably do that uh, Ooh, okay they have a 200 dollars one what's so what you get in that let's see oh here mm-hmm. uh, put it in the chat so that uh so that danny can share it oh yeah do, do, do. 
Avengers, what we got here? Let's see. Online beta access. What is going on with this collector's edition? <laughs> Do you guys see this? Hold on. My internet's kind of messed up right now. I think we're I think we're good. Why the bobblehead? There's a bobblehead and a statue? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get a Hulk bobble or and like a cap statue and Thor's hammer as a keychain and a belt buckle from Black Widow's costume. This thing's all over the place. Well, wow, you get like one. MX is making this game? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, those are uh, Tomb Raider guys, right? Yeah, I love that Tomb Raider series. I had no oh, idea that, that was them. Mind blown on live. Oh, hold on, no. hold on. Just, oh, yeah. Hold on, just, just repeat because like my internet's kind of popping in and out. What what are we uh who who's making the game? Crystal Dynamics. They're the people that have made Tomb Raider, basically. Like the good oh, the Tomb Raiders ones? that have come out recently. I love oh, that shit. trilogy. So, oh, this, like, now I feel good. obligated to at least give game because I love oh, those three games of Tomb Raiders. Oh, yeah, you literally get, like, some sort of, like, uh, item from every single Avenger. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, yeah. you get a Hulk bobblehead, Thor a Thor keychain, yeah, cap statue, the Black Widow belt buckle, Armor. which kind of looks awkward because it's super yeah. tall, but I guess it could work. I uh, I saw the Marvel Legends Outback Hulks. Is apparently the Hulk's been hiding out in the the Australian Outback, and he's got oh, like what? he's got like the gray ash on him, and he's got like the white stripes painted all over him, and he's got like this bomb ass beard. I'm just like, that's the Hulk that I have missed in the movies. Is where he like oh he, hell is sick. Where he goes to like the how, did you find a picture of it? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, it's like where he goes like you know to the, all these exotic locations to try to like learn and to be calm and everything. Got a beard. Yeah, it's so sick. I love that design. I was at Target earlier today and I saw a fifty dollars Squirrel Girl um uh, uh box set for Marvel Legends. It yeah. comes with three squirrels and a Vespa. Wait, you're at Target, so was I. We didn't run into each other. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, the Vespa. I was at the No, Armani. Oh, okay. Next, I was I'm, just gonna, gonna, I'm just gonna text you so I can be like, hey, where are you at? Which Target? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah. By the way, that Target man is like it's one of those mini Targets, but it only sells bare essentials. And I was like, oh man, this is this is like a sad. I know. Target. There's like nothing there. I've been yeah. there. It's like mm-hmm. every store in like San Francisco. First time I went. <laughs> first, time I, first time I went to a Target and then buy anything because most know, of them right? I go and not buy anything. I'm just spending two hundred dollars on like. I I spent like way too much money at a Target because I bought shelves. Yeah. <laughs> IKEA but, um, man, you got to go to IKEA. It, yep. They're closed right now. Are they closed still? Shoot. Yeah, they're closed for COVID. Yeah. But um, any what were we saying? The Avengers game. I did not know. I pre-ordered it because it was Crystal Dynamics. Oh, you just did right now? Yeah, I just did right now. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Dynamics. I got it for Xbox. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting uh, that crazy two hundred dollar one. No, though. hell no, no. Yeah, hell no. It's like yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. But there is one that has a bunch of patches on it, and I'm uh, kind of a patch man. So, oh, are you now? Oh, yeah. Huh. yeah I got I'm that deluxe guy. edition for 80 bucks, though. And you get mm. the Obsidian outfit pack, which Ooh. I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give me that. Like, most of my money goes to, like, non-physical things. Like, most of like, my money is, like, food and, like, comics. Yeah. So, I yeah guess. Mine's, like, mine's just, like, DLC and, DLC and, like, you know, just, like, access codes to things. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, man, I just sold one of my, uh, my Mezco, I just sold my Mezco Superman figure so I could uh, buy the new Mezco Superman, the Christopher Reeve one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because like they, they cleaned out the pre order, so now I got to pay like scalper prices for it. Whack. Yeah. But, uh, oh, speaking of figures, uh, did. Oh, wow, that's sick. There's a new, hold on, I'll do a screen share here for anybody who's watching. Hold on, let me look up on the this real quick and race fix hush figure should have brought oh this up yeah the podcast oh, see, I, I don't I, see I, it i went hold on. i went and checked it out hold on wait do you collect action figures action figures becker uh i used to and everything but i got i appreciate a guy a nice figure and stuff a nice sculpt uh yeah, when, you very... the, when you say the christopher reeve superman i thought uh wheelchair but so but you know what it's the it's the standing superman so that's good <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
Oh, it's so mean. That, oh my god, it just clicked. I was like, <laughs> that's so mean. Oh man, make a fun I of Christopher like, Reeves like make about? make a fun of Christopher Reeves like make a fun of Bob Ross. Mm. He went uh, there. There's a there's a the Mayfax uh, hush figure. That's pretty. I think it looks so cool. I can't wait. For oh, that. dude, yeah, I like Hush's villain. Yeah, I do too. I was hoping that you know he was originally supposed to be the villain of uh, Arkham Knight. Yeah, I remember that. He would have been a good pick. I don't like Jason Todd as the villain for Arkham Knight, but that's a different no. topic. That but, uh, I really I think that if they were gonna do a proper like finale for a Batman movie in the in the DC extended universe, I think if you combine the Hush story with the Under the Red Hood story, you could really work. do that'd be a great story to combine. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Like have yeah. like like have a uh, hush throw it off Hella that oh he's Jason Todd and then it's revealed that it's secretly been like his accomplice the Red Hood. So yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to see that, but who knows? We may never get it. Yeah, I don't know. I still haven't oh, seen the dude. animated one. I I wish. Oh, I saw, I saw the animated one. It's, oh, uh, it? eh. it's all right. I like you know the, the comic the, is better. They, there they was took, a big change they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard that they changed a lot of the story. Well, you Let have me, like you have like an eighty page, you know, eighty page two volume graphic novel, novel, and you make it go for an hour and a half. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, you got you got to add a lot of filler into there. I There's I'm a, really excited for Man of Tomorrow though. Man of Tomorrow. Yeah, it's a new Superman movie that's going to be kicking off the the new uh, animated universe. Oh, I love those I love those ones. And it I could already tell them like this is a Superman movie that they should have. This is what Man of Steel should have been. Oh, oh hell that's yeah. what it was. Okay, I totally forgot because I probably exited it from my memory, but it wasn't Thomas. It wasn't Tommy Elliot as a uh, hush. It was the Riddler, right? Yeah, it was the Riddler in the movie, which I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. no, no. It, it well, caught thanks me off for guard. spoiling it, it for me. Yeah. It, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And you son of a little... bitch. Spoiler yeah, alert. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just it's saved like... you the anger. I'm so sorry, yeah. Dan. I thought. I know you... that makes me so angry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I didn't mean to. I was just this ruined my whole night. <laughs> That's what I do. Where's my whiskey at? I need some. Uh, God damn it! You're my whiskey. <laughs> God, turn into my father. Oh shit! Lobo's in this thing. Oh hell yeah! Lobo and in Parasite what? and Lex Luthor. Oh nice. And what? Man, in, of uh, Man of Tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know that. And it, the animation oh, this, style looks just this, like Archer. Yeah, it is. It reminds. It kind of also reminds me of the uh, Max Fleshingers. Yeah. And yeah. uh, and Martian Manhunter is going to be in it. Oh, good. Yeah, and this I, is, oh, I, I'll have to I check always, that out. I always liked him. I always it's, liked Martian Manhunter. This is like supposed things. to be kicking off the whole universe when like Superman first reveals himself to the world and the they're finding out that the universe is bigger. I'm just like that really is what. Yeah, bring it back a little bit, you know. Yeah, mm. it sounds like that they're kind of skimming over the origin too, which I kind of like. I'm yeah, yeah. Good. I'm, I'm enough with the origins. Yeah. The thing is, the problem with good Superman stories is they're always origin stories. Mm-hmm. Right. So you know, it's hard to write a good Superman story that's not an origin. Apparently, I, at least they there's there's some pretty good ones, but yeah, I agree no, I know there. there is. Yeah. But, uh, what, else, what else happened this week? Uh, Ooh, the figure looks dope. Do we want to touch on the? All right, let's 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 skim over it. All right, we'll, we'll we'll power through this before we say something that gets us canceled. Um, well, I don't know if you heard Becker, but basically the comic book industry has been getting blown up lately. Yeah, I saw the Warren Ellis thing. Yeah, um, so yeah, so so is he like is he getting me too too or something or it's... no the other way around? Oh, he's he's me tooing someone. He's yeah. So oh. him and another artist have been. Uh, I haven't looked too into it, but when I re- last read the headlines and read into the articles, at least as far as what I've read, you know, I it said that Cameron Stewart was guilty and that people acknowledged the bad things he did. That's the guy from Dark Horse, right? No, that was another guy. Okay. So the, the crazy thing that's been going on in comics lately is that a lot of people working in comics are like predators that have been basically – like you know uh called out right. after all these years i didn't know how to word it I'm, it's it's a dicey subject right like it it sounds like from the the guy at dark horse uh what was his name brandon i linked it earlier in our chat uh, 
I forgot. This I remember is, this reading is all, it. This is all brand new to let me. me right let now. me look it up real quick so I get the names right. And then there's the um, other guy, Cameron Stewart. Cameron Stewart, who's an artist. Uh, he was known for basically being predatory towards younger women, like 20, 19, when he's like 35 or something like that. And then Warren Ellis. Um, Warren Ellis sounds more like, yeah, it's uh, Scott Alley from uh, from Dark Horse Comics, and that his accusations were pretty bad. But I think the thing with Warren Ellis sounds more like he was just hitting on a bunch of women, and probably not doing it at the best times, and going farther than he should have. Yeah, so I don't know. It that it, to me, it just sounds like he was being inappropriate, but it doesn't like not saying what he was doing, not justifying what he's doing, but it doesn't sound as severe as what these other guys were doing. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things that like that's going to become a whole case, and there's got to be a lot of investigation going on, and right. You know, it's one of those things that like we have to remember, like we gotta. At least what I've noticed from the comic book community, because, you know, I follow a bunch of random people on Twitter and Instagram and all that. Right. A lot of people making statements that from now on, they're not going to stay quiet because a lot. Unfortunately, there was a lot of cases where people would witness these acts and not do anything about it. Yeah, A lot of women and, uh, have stayed quiet because they wanted to try to have a career, which is terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, and, that, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunately these things people get put in situations and different forms of media where they're, you know, their whole career is on the line right. and not even media, just in general. And in the past people don't speak up and now there's people who are done with that and they are, are going to speak up now. And a lot of comic book creators are saying, you know, I'm now ruined. On, yeah. they will not let this continue and they will make sure that justice is served, you know, to these people. And I don't, from what I've heard of war with Warren Ellis, I don't know, maybe there's more information that I haven't seen yet or anything, but if it's what it is and that he's just, you know, inappropriately trying to hit on women or, you know, acting like that, he was like, you know, do you know who I am or whatever? I don't think that that's, he deserves to be canceled, but I think he just definitely deserves to be called out. Mm -hmm. Well, right. DC cut ties with him. Ah, well, yeah, then there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, so he lost his project that he was working with DC because they didn't want to work with him if that was true. Same thing with Cameron Stewart. He got dropped from all his projects. Okay, well, Cameron oh, wow. Stewart, yeah. Yeah, Cameron yeah. Stewart sounds like he was really... So, and the fact that he can't even deny that. I think, you know, people... the people, Again, the people I've been following that talk about this stuff and bring it to light, I think, you know, that they're they're ready to speak up and help those who have had the misfortune of being mistreated and right i think you know as people like for danny and i to you know want to work in the industry to remember that like how do i word this i don't it's you know what i mean like it's it's hard to it's kind of one it of those is. things like man i want to work in this industry and all this is happening and it's just like it's kind of like how the me too movement killed my drive to want to work in the film industry i'm just like oh you guys are all horrible people yeah and oh, that's yeah. You know, you're not the only person to say that. I know multiple people. Uh, another friend of mine that it's going to work with us on comics and, you know, film stuff with Becker, he felt the same way. He got a degree in screenwriting. Yeah. And he, you know, after everything with, uh, what's his name? Weinstein. Yeah. After finding out all that and just kind of like how terrible the industry is and how they mistreat so many people and how it's so terrible. Like, he was just like, I don't want to be involved in that. Right. And, you know, I, you know, a lot of these, some of these, a lot of these cases to me are legitimate. And I think that it's that, you know, these people deserve to be buried under the jail for a lot of the stuff that they did. But then there's some where I'm just like, I don't think you deserve to be canceled or anything. I don't think you deserve to lose everything. But I mean, it's just like, you know, don't hit on women that you work with. Mm -hmm. don't you know don't yeah. be a terrible person yeah. and people people don't women don't go to work to be flirted with or hit on like you know no just have some couth and that's kind of how i feel about with uh with warren ellis i'm just like come on now like don't flirt like not every woman that comes to your booth wants to get with you or whatever just use tinder you know i'm pretty sure if you put up on tinder hey i'm famous writer warren ellis you'll be fine yeah 
I know. wrote the. He'd be like, "Yeah, I'm the guy that wrote uh, the uh, the Castlevania Netflix series." Yeah, Ooh, there you go. You'll get plenty of weeaboos coming wait, after you. Wait, is that is that the, is that him? Yeah. Oh shit! All right. Yeah, Warren Ellis wrote the. He's a comic writer. You know, he did uh, Transmet- Transmetropolitan. Hmm. Or and, then, that, uh, and then there's Cameron Stewart. He's the guy that did the new whole Batgirl redesign, right? Which is, uh, well, he, he helped design it, but it was another artist. And that makes me feel like, man, you get in a weird spot where, like, do you keep the material these people made? Because I have some some of those Batgirl books. Mm-hmm. I, and, think it was a cool know, back, I think it was a cool Batgirl. Yeah, it was a great design. And, like, now I'm like, do I, you know, am I a bad person for – having this work and you know you know what i mean you know there there was a class that i had at um at, at san francisco state and it was with uh professor larry island islandberg i think his name was or ellenberg and uh excuse me but it was called the art of comedy and we would watch a lot of clips of comedians and everything and he played it he wanted to ask us he asked the class and we had a lot of kind of I want to say kind of social justice type people, the people that would cancel you over anything. Oh yeah. And, you know, and don't get me wrong. Like the, cause he was, he asked the class, like, I want to know if you could still find somebody like Bill Cosby funny. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Bill Cosby. I can't believe that there's some people that still think that he's innocent. <laughs> Yeah, dude. I'm just like you That's... don't have that many women come oh, no. up <laughs> and not be like it's just and everybody knew about it. You know, you think you hear so many comedians say like, "Oh yeah, we knew about this in the '80s, but we weren't for sure." And it's like, come on now. But yeah, the anyway, maybe. back to what the teacher was saying. He said, "Uh, I want to know if we could if you, you could still find somebody like Bill Cosby, um, uh, funny." And he played an old Bill Cosby clip, and everybody in the class was like real straight face like this. And then like halfway through it, everybody started busting out laughing. Yeah, you it's know, funny. it's Cause yeah, it's one of those funny. things like and it's Bill Cosby. You know, before the general public or the I guess the fans of his material knew what he did. You know, like for me, I watched Cosby Show growing up, and I used to watch Cosby stand up as like a teenager because I thought it was like. So there was no punchline, nothing made sense, and it was like the most hilarious thing ever. He was a storyteller. Yeah, he was a storyteller. And then you find, and then everything happened, and I was like, oh you my find God. That like, out. The one that hit hard for me was Little Bill. Little Bill? Remember Little Bill? Yeah, uh, Nick Jr.? Yeah, yeah. he, because yeah. he, uh, I used he to watch that. that when I was a little kid, and yeah, he made that show, and I'm just like, oh my God, Little Bill. Yeah, and I, now I can't, you can't look even at show, that show. Yeah. You can't show a kid that because. You know, you don't want to. He's wanna... in the intro. Just everything. Yeah, and it's uh, and I get what you're saying about that. You know, I, I don't know. It's a, uh, you know, it goes it's... back and forth for me. You know, like again, like I almost feel like I I can't hold on to this like Cameron Stewart drawn stuff because now it's just bad juju. You know, it it kind of feels like that, and it's like you know. Yeah. in certain situations you just can't support people right and i'm not going to speak for everyone but you know that's what it kind of gets to like you don't want to give this person who's horrible and does horrible things you don't want to give them more recognition or like good you don't want to give them any sort of like money especially or anything like that so right and you know yeah it's just a it's a really complicated issue and i, I try to look at it from both sides i'm not a believe all woman person but i'm also not a believe all men guy i think as soon as you mm-hmm. say oh believe everybody you kind of that's no. not fair no, absolutely not Never yeah I don't, I don't think that's fair like that's but there are just like what that one writer described about that happened to her in the on a company trip with that guy from dark horse that was that was terrible and it's and then he like, was like the head person at dark horse right yeah and and, and then and, he, and the fact that he has multiple people coming after him i'm just like that's yeah i mean it's, and at that point do you even like it gets you thinking like do you want to read any dark horse books or you know like yeah it uh it kills sure kills it yeah so um you know and, and then, i go ahead brandon oh no i was gonna try to end on a certain note but go ahead continue well, yeah, I just wanted to say too, you know, like what's happening with uh, the the vid- the YouTuber Angry Joe. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna transition to that. <laughs> oh okay. Well, do you want to do that? here? Go ahead, do that. 
Well, I was just going to say, you know, it's it's one of those situations, like, I'm pretty sure Becker went through this, trying, wanting to, like, you know, work with film, for instance. Mm-hmm. Like, seeing, like, certain people do terrible things, but, like, we're both people that want to work in comics. That's, like, yeah. the dream, right? You well, know, like, nowadays, it's always just, like, you wake up and you look at your phone and you're like, oh, there's another one. Yeah, yeah. that's oh, the thing. there's another and one. Like, you know, like, we always talk about the dream of writing comic books, creating our own independent books, and working on our favorite superheroes right danny like that's like the big thing yeah like we, well the trick is you got to keep your uh you got to keep your professional and personal things like totally you know separate you know right like like yeah. i was saying you know you don't why i don't get men who hit on women like at the office or whatever at work i'm just like they're they're here to work like that don't yeah, bother no one's them. trying to do yeah no one wants that when they're going to work and like yeah. unless like you're really that. close friends with them and it becomes a <laughs> mutual thing I want, you want, to get you want hit people on. to hit it. You want people want, to hit on you at work all the time, <laughs> all the time. Well, as someone, I get. I mean, as someone who's never been hit on at work, I guess I don't know. Like, I have been, and I didn't realize until after she quit. I ah, and it was like two months later. Worse. I was like, "Damn it!" I I think I've had maybe a total of three people hit on me at my jobs in my life. I don't know. Whenever women hit on me, it's like the weirdest shit. I'm just like, "Why are you?" Do, what do you I've doing? Never, I've never really been hit on, so I don't know. I don't really know the. Anything. Okay, maybe I don't. Maybe they weren't hitting on me. I could say well, there was one time I went to a nightclub, and there was this one like hot Asian chick that was sitting in the standing in the group next to us, and she was just staring at me, like <laughs> locked on for like, I'd say a good five minutes of just like, <laughs> what did I do? I felt so uncomfortable. I'm just like, are you? Uh, well, you know. And you can kind of, it kind of gives you an idea of how people feel they get hit on multiple times at their work, you know? Or yes, anywhere. exactly. And it does, I, I get that. And, you know, if yeah. you have just a bunch of idiot guys that are, that are asking you out day after day, it's just, and you're trying to just get your work done and go home, I think that's, you know. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, like, you know, we always talk about how we all want to work in comics and have our dream jobs of writing these characters, making our own stories independently. And it's one of those things like, the terrible things people do aren't to a particular medium of art or anything. True. We'll see. Unfortunately, these kind of terrible things are kind of all over the world. Right. So it's one of those things that as people who want to be creators, that we need to ensure that we can create a safe space within that workplace. Right. And, and I, well, we, said- yeah, that we do our part to make everybody feel welcomed and to feel safe and to to have their dream job and not feel like they're in danger in any way. And it's like a lot of creators are pledging to make sure that it is a better world in that community. Right. And I think and, that that I, I didn't cut you off, Brandon, did I? I was, no, I was just going to say, and like, I think us going into that industry, we need to remember that we need to help make that safe space as well. And we need to make sure to like, if anyone is at any sort of danger or risk that we cannot sit aside and stay silent. Right. And, you know, I, people who, you know, people who say like, Oh, you know, you snowflake safe space and all that. You are not to me, that kind of stuff never applies to your workplace. You have every right to feel safe at the place that you have to go every day to make money to yeah, live exactly. and that's ridiculous when people think that some people aren't entitled to that so you know i just i just think as people who are creators or people of this world we need to uphold that safety within wherever we're at right yeah i agree especially you know as a that, that applies to everybody you know yeah everybody we need, to make, we need to make a safer world right we need exactly to beautiful, beautiful art with a safe world Right. I mean, the but, world uh, is going to be society in general is going to be shitty. There's no doubting that, but I think that everybody deserves to be able to go to work and not have to worry about this kind of stuff. Exactly. Right. But, and, um, yeah. And then uh, we're going to say the angry Joe stuff. So you guys, do you both watch angry, angry Joe? Oh yeah. I've been watching oh, yeah. angry Joe since the beginning, pretty much. Yeah. I am yeah. a huge fan. Back, of angry Joe. Uh, back on that guy with the glasses back on my um, uh, channel awesome uh, and then when he split off and does his own thing i still right. follow his stuff I, I he does really good work 
Right. And, yeah, and, you know, and he also does little stupid skits too, you know, like yeah. he, he, he has the, yeah. He, the angry reviews. and Yeah, the angry reviews. To me. Know, what happened with him? Or were you going to say Denny? Oh, I was about to explain what happened. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so for anybody who doesn't, who doesn't know, because it's, it's been pretty big around the, the video game community, uh, Angry Joe got accused by a f- somebody he met at a convention and I think it was VidCon or TwitchCon, something like that. I don't know. One of the video game conventions. But um, to me, this case is kind of, I think, represents what's kind of wrong with the, the Me Too movement, you know, and that th- this is one of the negative parts of it to me because um, this, she reached out to him, this, this girl did, at um, two o'clock in the morning she was clearly flirting with him by the text messages that she posted. And then she he flirted back like a absolute dipshit. Like, I don't know. I, to me, I wouldn't try. I just, maybe it's because I just don't trust people. Mm-hmm. And I, well, maybe I'm giving myself too much credit. I'd probably be like, oh, hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he texted this girl back and he was just like, yeah, you know, hey, let's, I think he invited her to dinner or something. I hope I'm not... If I'm getting, I, I highly recommend anybody, you know, try to go and, and look at the, look this up themselves in case I get any of the, the details wrong, anybody who's listening. But he, uh, he invited her out to dinner and they, I think that they, they met at like his hotel room, I think. And she, he took a shower and everything and, and then they went out to dinner after and they went to like this public party or whatever. And according to her that, at first she said in this blog post that he like put her up against the wall and sexually harassed her or whatever, that he kept her phone and trapped her in this room. And oh God. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but, but, but she still went to dinner with him after with, the, with a bunch of other people around. This was a very public, like, yeah, that's, that's weird. Yeah. It's a gathering that's... that they went to. And then he responded right away and said that like, um, that no, that didn't happen. You know, these are very serious allegations and he got his lawyers involved like that. Oh yeah. And, uh, of course, because uh, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is like three years into the whole me too thing. Right. And this is like two years ago. This happened like two years ago that, that this is something that she's referencing. And then, you know, she started getting called out for like her story and everything. And then she backed it up and said, okay, well, I never said he assaulted me. It's just what he did was predatory. He used his status to you know coerce me or whatever kind of like with the warren ellis thing and mm-hmm. uh either way like i think she kind of got called out for like they're just saying and then it and then it turned out she has a boyfriend she had a boyfriend at the time oh oh yeah so oh. i don't know i think she got caught exactly. and then i was being blown out of proportion now right and then uh and then like you know the fact that she had to back up and say okay well i never said he assaulted me it was like no you clearly did you clearly did yeah and then uh and she was a mar- and she's a marine she's a former what? marine so it's just like what? i mean fucking I, dames man yeah, I'm, just, games. I'm just like you should have i mean if you're a marine and you're training combat and everything why don't you beat the shit out of them that, you didn't think Joe, a video yeah, gamer? Like, like she was full on, like she finished boot camp and like she was former Marine. Yeah. Oh yeah? And, like she probably had Abby arms. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because it's not easy to be a Marine. Like it's Marines, that's tip top of the United States military. Like, yeah, that's, that's like below you need Navy to be SEAL. On top of your shit. And like you need to be like trained, like legitimately trained and like Yeah. So this is one of the ones where I'm just like, I'm sorry, just with the evidence that was provided and everything, I, I got to go with Joe on this one. I mean, has he oh, come yeah. out and said anything? Oh, yeah. He's very publicly said that. He said, this is what happened. I never, she could have left whenever she wanted. She, we were around. This was all in public that all this mm-hmm. happened. And, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know why now. It's the same thing happened to Aziz Ansari, like, during the whole Me Too movement, too. Like, what happened on... with that? Because I don't even know who that is. So, so Aziz Ansari, you know, uh, Tom Haverford from Parks and Rec, the Indian guy? Oh, him. So, yeah. during the whole Me Too thing. So, apparently, he wanted to date with this chick. And then, you know, they, uh, they had a good time. They hooked up. You know, probably did some uh, mouth parties or whatever. And then, like, years later, she comes out saying, like, he got all, like, 
you know, he like sexually harassed her and assaulted her. But then Aziz Ansari, like he was just like, I thought he was like, I thought we had a good time. Like I actually enjoyed myself. And then like, you know, he was actually, he, he was more, one that was more like, it's not even like a, on the status thing. He was like personally like, ups, like hurt by it. Right. Because yeah, because you know, that things happen. So imagine going on a date and you're having a good time and then like it all works. So it works well. And then you find out yeah. like, it was like, Oh wait, what? That's what you thought the whole time. What? Oh my God. Right. And I think that, you know, the Me Too movement, it's something that really needed to happen. These there's a lot of predatory men and, and yeah, women that needed to be called out. And but I mean these kind of allegations like this or is this what's it's Yeah, it's it's I'm, making dating for men a lot harder, I'll say that. It's I've always when my friends and I talk about this stuff, uh, you know, what we read in articles and what we hear in kind of what's circulating on social media. It's one of those things like it's a tough situation to approach. Yeah, it is. Cause there's no right way to do it. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, we live in a system where everyone who's accused of any crime is innocent to pr- until proven guilty. Right. Mm-hmm. So in these scenarios, a lot of the time people assume whoever the, person being convicted is guilty or is innocent so then you know you kind of see these two different sides you know people trying to prove them guilty people trying to defend them and then you you read the headlines you look at like what evidence is brought to light and it's one of those things that's like you know you don't want to side with the wrong person right or believe the wrong person and it's just like there's all these like ways to go about it and it just doesn't feel like like you never know who was telling the truth unless you're there and it's just one of those things that it's so hard to approach especially like if you're not a professional like being like an angry joe subscriber like you know there's probably some out there that are like oh my god i can't believe he did that and then some that are defending him and it's just you know i think that the yeah The big thing, though, is that, like, I kind of disagree with you on one part is just that I think it's we have a very guilty until proven innocent mindset with this kind of stuff, because even if you, you know, just an accusation, like, even if it comes out false, that follows you around for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's the kind of like, Hmm. and that's why I said, that's why I said, like, the system, really, right? Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. No, you're right right about that. I'm saying for me, it's hard to, like, approach. Right. And I'm it, pretty it sure it's hard too. for a lot of people. Yeah. I, cause I don't know what to, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a complicated situation. And, you know, in this instance, I, I do believe Joe just from the, the evidence that's been put forward. And unless something else comes out, then, you know, I, you know, but I, you know, as far as a lot of the things with the comic book industry, um, Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people that are in power that that they, they need to. They don't need to be. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah. well, that's why I said people have to uphold, like, do their part to make a better world. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, well, I guess right. uh, the Angry Joe stuff. It's still going to be going on, right? It's not officially closed. No, it doesn't seem like it. She's just backed up. I, I will I will say this though. I think the person who made it way worse for this for this accuser with the angry Joe thing is the person who first shared the status. Because Becker, did you uh-huh. see that how it was first shared? No, that, this is actually today was the first time I'm actually hearing about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was yeah. a it was like a friend of hers that shared it on Twitter and put angry joe among the list of a bunch of other youtube gamers of saying that you know all these gamer these gamers that i looked up to and then now you know they're being accused and everything or 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 now that you know they're predators or whatever and yeah i i don't know i think he kind of opened up a more of a can of worms but i uh I know that there's a time and a place that you're supposed to to hit on women or or you know do anything like that and stuff like that but you know i i I don't think that just because a guy hits on you or something or vice versa that that just because that person's in a higher uh like you know more of a 
uh, higher power. Status, yeah, or a higher status. Yeah. I don't think that that warrants, you know, oh, he was grooming you or being predatory or so. I think it was just people, people are people sometimes. And I don't think that that means that, you know, that automatically means I mean, sexual harassment unless it went upon like, no, as long as, as soon as you go upon no, to, to me, that's sexual harassment. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, it's always hard because you never know how to read people, especially if you don't know them. Exactly. And, and everybody's different. Yeah, every everybody's different and every situation is different and everyone's threshold of comfortability when it comes to dating, I guess yes. you could say, or yes, interactivity exactly. even. You know, it's what, all different. What somebody might consider sexual harassment, that might be another person's flirting, to be honest. I know it sounds unpopular to say that, but I mean, it's true. People are different by the way they interpret um, things and you have to be careful. Yeah, so... It's well, that's why I say it's hard because there's there's so much like variances that make this whole thing like like approaching it, understanding it, and talking about it, and seeing like who's right, who's wrong, determining who's right and wrong. It's just all so like everywhere. It's and, all over the place. Yeah. But I guess you know, just keep reading the headlines and see what happens with Angry Joe at this point. Yeah, I mean, I I I have a feeling that everything's going to turn out good for him because I. I, I think that this was a uh, I don't think that this was him doing anything wrong. Well, like you said, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to follow him one way or another. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the way uh, things are, but you know, uh, I don't know. I'm happy that uh, a lot of these guys are getting called out there on the comic book industry. It, it needs to happen. It, yeah. Get the, oh, yeah I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know there was a whole thing in the comic book industry, but it just before. started. Uh, yeah. well, I mean, it's been, I mean, about a week. These, these things happen, but the whole uprising of like calling them out, that was like it. There's like hints of it in the past couple of years, but basically a week ago is when it all got like supercharged and just like, you know, calling them out left and right. And even then though, I still don't agree with just a bunch of people tweet about you. And then that means you lose everything. There's to me, there's gotta be a lot more to it than that. Well, like I said, it's still in the process of, being of you know working how do i put it it's just every time working out the kinks about, yeah just working it out and figuring out what happens next and how you approach it right so right uh, well, well hey it's, it's uh god it's depressing <laughs> well that's basically what happened this week though yeah, that's uh, that yeah, that's ended the, up. That's the weekly update right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. that ended up taking up a lot of a lot of the news this week, and I was just like, "Can we just focus on Michael Keaton and uh, the new Hush action figure?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, yeah. But um, hey, anything else you guys want to say or? Uh oh, I, I posted that link at instantcosby.com. It's one of my favorite websites out there. It just uh. Just click it. You'll you'll thank me later. It's All right, I'll, I'll check <laughs> it. <laughs> Instantcosby.com. Yeah, oh. this is and yeah, and uh, yeah, this this came out way before everything. So, oh my god, it's just the website of his face. Yeah, but if if you keep if you keep uh, loading onto it, it, it keeps uh, generating different ones. Yeah, it's, it's all gifts basically. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but it just takes up the whole screen. Oh my god, and this is before everything. Yeah, this is before everything. Oh man. Yeah. Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's so big and in your face <laughs> oh yeah oh it's great it's uh, my favorite thing to do is just to go to other people's houses and if i notice like they have a browser open i'll just go to go to there and just leave it yeah <laughs> oh man those faces oh it's so it's so creepy looking at him now mm-hmm. yeah i know right it changes it's, everything it makes me but, so um, uncomfortable i know right which makes which i think it's even funnier now <laughs> mr. Wholesome, mr wholesome right there i know america's dad Little sweaters. Now America, now America's sad. Oh uh, yeah. But uh oh man. Well, oh, yeah, talk about a week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh <sighs> read this stuff for yourself, I guess. That's all I can yeah, say. Then, God, yeah. Better well, do your I own have, research. I have personally learned a lot. So this is a very informative uh Yeah, and informative. you know, Becker, thanks for coming on. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And I appreciate honestly I having you on here. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so, so when do we uh, when do we start recording all this? 
Uh, well, no? shit. Oh, oh yeah. This, is just, oh, this was oh, just no. a preliminary. This was just a preliminary talk. Yeah. No, but uh, Becker. Hopefully, you know, we want to work with you, and hopefully, you can come back and do some more. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it's like I, I don't really get to uh, uh, talk uh, talk shop about uh, all this nerd stuff that I'm into with uh, my uh, you know my peoples. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's so also it's, it's fun it's very, to just talk and just kind of like actually conversate about this stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So thanks I for hope, coming on, and uh, I feel like I just ruined my whole reputation with talking about uh, the Me Too stuff. It's just such a. Oh, but you said the right answers though, so it's just like you know, it's you get. People have to be able to talk about these things too. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm not saying that yeah. they have to be forced to. It's just like in order to, you know, you only learn more by discussing certain things and you understand how situations work. And sometimes we have to talk about these things to, for Becker's case, find out what's going on out there. Right. Yep. And uh, the, there is a really funny joke I heard from, I don't remember the comedian who said it, it was on a, one of the NPR shows and she was just like, uh, you know, I, I divorced my husband. Uh, I was a victim of the Me Too movement. My husband didn't do anything. He was just too afraid to look at me thinking that I would report him for sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you, I was a comedian? Yeah, I was a comedian on, on one That's of good. the NPR shows or something. I was like, That's oh, okay. funny. And I, uh, I, I was thinking about that. I'm just like, what a shitty time to go back on the market for dating right now. Cause I, I do, I do feel afraid. I'm just like, I'm afraid if I look at a girl wrong, I'm just going to get me too. I, I tried explaining that to when my girlfriend and I first met, like, it yeah. was like, I felt like I can't make any moves because yeah. you just, you need to make sure it's okay. And sometimes you need a vocal, you know, or you Honest. need a yes <laughs> at this point i've already yeah. to carry around like a contract and be like can you sign here please just to make sure yeah like you need to like first date i'm like we should have this conversation where like <laughs> you know like yeah it, that's how it was and she was like are you okay like you don't have to be shy and i'm like it's just you don't know sometimes right and i'm already a shy person when it comes especially when it comes to women so like now i'm just like it's off the charts and i'm just like <sighs> oh god but um well, I guess we'll see how next week, uh, next week's update will go. Oh, I just, I just, I, you know, all the comedians and everything too. It's just like as long as when it comes to comedians, as long as Bill Burr and Dave Chappelle don't get, you know, implicated in anything that's or you know called out for anything, I'm fine. And then as long as like my favorite comic book artists don't get called out for anything, I'm fine. You know, you know just, I just let's just make sure there's no more shitty people. You know, yeah. like. Exactly. But, uh, like I'm not, not saying like I hope they don't get called out if they did anything. I'm just like I hope that they didn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, God, well, I guess we'll see how next week goes, and then we're gonna discuss more uh, Michael Keaton and uh, some bat stuff on. Uh, yes, we are gonna do the, the on the other podcast. Yes. And uh, Michael Keaton is the best. You take that back, you little. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually. Before you go, let me let me show you how angry I get over this Michael Keaton business. Oh my god, that that argument that we were having. Oh, what happened? She posted in her live journal about it. No, <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> the voice of God. Next time you come at me and say Michael Keaton is the best one, I will hunt you down. You will not be ready for me. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you could do that. They need to make. They need to make something on here where you can change your voice to like the Ben Affleck Batman. That's what I basically have on my computer. I am the knight. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber I have a buggy question. Bumpers. Do you bleed? <laughs> that's that. That's actually really cool. Okay, I have to just say here that the line that Batman says when he throws the kryptonite gas grenade at Superman, where he goes like, "Bring it in." That's fear. <laughs> Greatest um, Batman line ever. Martha, Martha. Okay, and now you just killed it. Uh, that's a cher- <laughs> that is a cherry on top of this depressing week of just this Me Too thing going on in the comic book industry. Joe Cena dying, Joel Schumacher passing away. I mean, it's just yeah. The wait. Okay, hold on. Let me turn this off. Sorry. <clears throat> is this mic working? <laughs> <laughs> testing testing okay anyways okay do i sound normal again yes yeah uh what was i gonna say it was um i don't know the world's a crazy place and 
that's why we're here to just talk about it. Yep. But uh, everybody, stay tuned. We're gonna keep talking about stuff. We will, if you Not follow the other only. podcast, Paul City Comics, we will be talking more comics stuff on there. Yeah. So go ahead and plug. Uh, go ahead and uh, plug your shows, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Becker. Where can, we, where can we reach you guys at? Oh, you can uh, check us out at dollarsanddonuts dot com. Uh, also, we're on YouTube, and you go check us out from there. Um, and you go see all the various stuff. We're all a bunch of comic guys, all a bunch of uh, just like film nerds and stuff. We're also uh, big jerks, so uh, yeah, check it out. There it is, and hopefully we can get something going eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get us there because we're actually uh, we're actually starting a new phase because this uh, last year was our the end of our second phase. Nice. So, yeah, Perfect. we have a whole thing going on. So yeah. Perfect timing. You got like mm-hmm. I got four writers waiting for you. That's right. <laughs> and That's uh right. Danny, I think it's safe to say I'm pretty much gonna be on like 80% of your episodes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I'm pretty much gonna be here. Yeah. And uh we're we're gonna be on Brandon's podcast over at Paul City as well. So right. I have a rotating schedule on my podcast, so I have tons of people, but yeah, Brandon will be so, frequent. Thank you everybody for listening. Yes, and uh, if you uh, I forgot to announce, yeah, I'm officially a co-host on uh, Paula City Podcast. So uh, make sure or co-hosts go and uh, listen to us complain about everything there, and uh, like, subscribe, follow. Yeah, Brought let's to see. By so and so, you know, let's just see. Raid let's just, Shadow Legends. Let's see if we can get to 100 subscribers, guys. So yeah, just throw like help. Let's. Let's just get there. It's long yeah, overdue we're, we're that like, I'm under please, 100 please, subscribers. Please, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm begging you, just get us to 100 subscribers. So thanks for listening, guys, or watching, whatever you're doing. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Love from D3 Media, Paul City <laughs> Comics. Do- <laughs> uh, blah, blah. Why can't I say Becker's company? Do- <laughs> Dollars and donuts. Right? Coming at you. Coming at you. There you go. Coming at All you. All three of them. <laughs>